AQA, A-level physics, engineering option, and this is my 10th engineering video, and it's about engine efficiency. We talked uh, a lot about uh, petrol engines and diesel engines in the last video. Now we'll talk about the efficiency of an engine. Uh, loads of specification I'm gonna cover in this video. The, the first couple of bits actually, um, here, understanding four-stroke petrol engine and diesel engine cycle. I pretty much did that in the last video, but the rest of it I'm going to cover quite a bit. So this is a, a summary diagram of this video. Uh, efficiency. Now, efficiency, I remember, is output divided by input, uh, and that is usually a, a fraction, isn't it? because you don't get more energy out than you put in. If you multiply that by percentage, then it gives you it as a percentage, but usually it's a fraction. So you've got your input power. In the case of a, a petrol or diesel engine, the input power comes from uh, the fuel. So the energy available from the fuel divided by time, uh, and that's the input power. The output power, uh, another name for that is the brake power. And that's the, the power available at the crankshaft. The crankshaft, the bit that turns in the middle of the engine, the crankshaft. And then in between there, how we actually get to the output power. Well, from the PV diagram, we'll find what we call the indicated power. Uh, then you've got thermal efficiency. Then you've got mechanical efficiency. Uh, and basically you've got your overall efficiency is your output divided by your input. That's a summary of this video. We're gonna look at each of these bits individually and then we'll come back to this slide. So the input power. So the calorific value, the chemical energy uh, per kilogram in the fuel multiplied by the fuel flow rate, how much fuel you use every second. And that is the input power. Okay, now uh, the calorific value of petrol, uh, I've, I've got some data, 45.8 megajoules per kilogram. You'd be given a value in an exam, obviously, but we're gonna use that in a minute. Uh, the fuel flow rate for a given engine uh, will depend um, on several factors. It'll depend on the output torque, you know, which will depend on maybe if you're climbing a hill or not. It'll depend on the speed of the engine, how fast the engine is turning around. Uh, a typical value for the fuel flow rate, about two grams per second is a typical value. But as I said, it depends on lots of things. It depends on the size of the engine as well. Uh, so calculate the input power using the data given on this page. So let's just bung those two values into an equation. 91.6 kilowatts, yes. Uh, and that's uh, about right for a, a family sized car. Yeah, the input power. The output power, we'll look at the, the things affecting efficiency in a bit, but the output power, otherwise known as the brake power, OK, that's the power available at the engine's crankshaft. Earlier on in engineering, we came up with this formula. Power equals torque times omega. Yes, turning force times angular velocity. OK, and that's relevant here. And that's the power available at the crankshaft. Now, they used to call it uh, BHP. OK, uh, horsepower, you would you would measure the power of a car or the power of an engine in terms of how many horses it would be equivalent to. Uh, and one BHP is 746 watts, apparently. Uh, and compare that with a family car. The engine in a family car uh, is about 150 BHP, 150 horsepower. You can measure the uh, brake power using this thing called a, a dynamometer. Yeah, a, a brake dynamometer, yes. Uh, and basically what you have is you have a rope 
which is going over this pulley here. Would it be clearer if I used a different color? There's a rope going around this. Let's go black. There's a rope going around this pulley here. OK, uh, the motor is turning the pulley around. Yes, and then you have two force meters on either side of the rope. And then from the difference between these two forces uh, multiplied by the um, now, is it the radius or the diameter? If we're talking a couple, then it's the diameter of the pulley. That would tell you the torque produced by this couple. And then the power is the torque times the angular velocity. Anyway, you won't need to know dynamometers. If you go to university and do mechanical engineering, you'll use these things, dynamometers. So that's your brake power, which is your output power. How much power do we actually get from the engine, from the internal combustion bit? Uh, and we can get that from the indicator diagram. And we call this the indicated power. Now, the indicated power is the area of this loop. Do you remember for a PV diagram, the area under the curve is the represents the work done? So we have the area under the big curve, the top curve, which is expansion, minus the area under here, which is the work done compressing the gas. And that is the net work done yeah, per cycle. The net work done per cycle is the area inside the loop. An example of how you might work out the indicated power would be, let's say, the area of the loop times the number of cycles per second uh, times by the number of cylinders. Um, a typical value for the area in the loop, 200 joules. Number of cycles per second, if the engine's going at 3000 RPM, that's 50 times a second. And most cars have got four cylinders. Multiply that together, 40 kilowatts. OK, and that's called the indicated power which we get from the PV diagram. So the first thing that affects efficiency is what we call the thermal efficiency. Looking at the PV diagram, you'll notice that we get a certain amount of energy from the fuel here, and that's Q in. That's the energy input into the system. Then we get a certain amount of useful work out, which is W. But we also lose some heat energy, uh, which comes out of the exhaust mostly, and that's here Q out. Now, the efficiency is basically the amount of useful work that the engine does divided by the energy that we actually put in. So that's Q in. So the thermal efficiency is W, which is equal to the area inside the loop divided by Q in, which is the heat from burning petrol that goes into the system. Most road cars are about 40% efficient. They have a thermal efficiency of about 40%. The overall efficiency depends on something else now. It depends on friction in the mechanical parts. Now, mechanical efficiency uh, is the equation that we're given brake power divided by indicated power. Uh, and the friction power is the indicated power minus the brake power. So basically, it's the power loss due to friction is the friction power. Where is there going to be friction? Well, you've got these pistons going in and out of the cylinders, rubbing against the sides. I know it's very well lubricated, or it should be, uh, and the piston rings as well. A uh, lot of friction going on. Uh, the crankshaft is the, the shaft at the bottom, and that's spinning around on bearings. So you're going to have friction there. OK, so this will this friction will reduce the uh, total overall efficiency and it's called the mechanical efficiency. To measure the friction power, what you do is you run the engine at idle. OK, so it's just ticking along using enough fuel to keep it going. Yeah, run the engine at idle 
and then turn it off and then time how long it takes to stop. OK, and from that you can work out the angular deceleration. And then if you know the moment of inertia of the system, you can work out the frictional torque acting on the system. OK, and from that you can work out the friction power. So let's go back to this diagram, which we started the video at. Hopefully it might make a bit more sense now. So we have the input power. Let's go orange input power. And that's the power that we get from the fuel. So the input power watts joules per second is the calorific value of the fuel multiplied by the fuel flow rate. The output power or the brake power, that's the energy that we get at the crankshaft. That's the energy available at the crankshaft. OK, and that's called the output power. And that equals the torque times the angular velocity, the torque at the crankshaft multiplied by the angular velocity of the engine. The indicated power is from the PV diagram, and that's the theoretical energy or rather power available due to combustion and due to the cycle, yeah, the petrol engine cycle. And it's the area which is the energy per cycle multiplied by the number of cycles per second multiplied by the number of cylinders. Then there's the thermal efficiency due to heat wasted. And then there's the mechanical efficiency due to friction losses. OK, and so from all of that, we can get the overall efficiency of the system.